Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in, I appreciate it. So in this video today, I'm going to continue answering your questions because there were just so many that I really didn't feel like I could do it in the live that I did on Tuesday. Um, members, I just wanna remind you that Saturday tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific, for all members, messages from Spirit, that's where I pick 25 members, you ask your question and I read on it for you. And Thursday is the book club, 7 p.m. Yeah, 7 p.m. Eastern, which is 4 p.m. Pacific. And that's the Gratitude Journal by Bento. Bento Leal? Yes, Bento Leal. Um, new class is coming out. Discover your soul's design. So excited. Lots of exercises, lots of information to get you connected to your soul's purpose. The reason why you're here to connect you to your past lives and to your soul family. So really excited about that. And then tomorrow night, Saturday, I will be back on Hogarth's channel and it, that'll be Lady G and also Lena joining us. And if you didn't catch it, Milu and Hogarth did a collaboration on Milu's channel. That's really fantastic. Uh, and also, too, if you haven't tuned into Ganga's channel in a while, she's been making really beautiful paintings that you might want to take a look at. So let's get into this. Oh, and I want to say a special thank you to Ruth. Um, I remember how I showed you guys in the community tab that I got like over 16,000 emails that I'm supposed to somehow answer. You know, this is what happens when members, clients, and subscribers, everybody's trying to email you and ask you questions. And um, But under one of the comments, I did see that, Ruth, you sent me healing energy, you and your team, and I just wanted to say thank you. I really do appreciate that. I know a lot of you did, and I can't personally thank everybody, but I did see that just moments ago. So I just want to say thank you, Ruth. So Shahrazad asked a good question that is really kind of troubling, and that's about forcing the healthcare workers to go in sick. I think a lot of us are just finding out that this is happening. This wasn't, this wasn't something that I had realized um, last week even. So, you know, really scary. So what, what do I see changing with that? You know, obviously that is a problem. You know, we need to keep our health workers healthy and safe. They need time to rest and they also need to not spread their germs, right? Um, such, you know, the way that we're treating some of these healthcare workers, it's just criminal. It, it's really not okay. But I don't think that's going to last. Intuitively, I do not feel like this is something that's going to last. I think that those in charge are panicking because there's not enough people, but still doesn't justify it. So let's take a look about it changing. Interesting. So first card that I get, you know, the mother card, the empress. She's all about fertility and abundance. And this is one of my two cards for the United States. And so, okay, you know, we're finding out about it right now here in the U.S. that this is going on. But I also feel like she's a positive card. You know, she is a card that makes me feel like, because she's about abundance, that there will be money thrown at this issue. We need to hire more people. We need to offer incentives to get new staff, don't we? And so that makes me feel very hopeful that we get her. The obstacle... You know, people feeling like, well, if I don't come in, then I'm going to lose my job. They feel victimized. And you probably have some that also feel like martyrs, like, oh my gosh, if I don't go in, what's going to happen? And they're conflicted, you know, because I remember working in nursing homes, they would do that to us there with the flu. You know, they would say, well, stay home, don't come in, but there's nobody to replace you either. And so it was always like this really weird feeling and because I couldn't live with the fact that I could possibly harm an elder, I would take the time that I needed. But I think you have a lot of healthcare workers that are feeling like they're being held hostage. See, this is what I was saying. Look at this. They're going to throw some money at this because that's what we need to do. You know, if you need to start offering big bonuses and incentives for new staff to come in, then that's what needs to happen. We need to have better judgment. This is the judgment card. We need to exercise better judgment. 
because this affects not just the here and now, but the future of healthcare. If you are a young person, you know, say you're 17, 18 years old and you're watching this, would you want to become a nurse? Or would you be fearful that this could happen to you? So I feel, you know, Shaharazad, that this is going to get better. Okay. But it should have never really happened in the, to begin with. Right. Um, Gina asked a law of one question uh, about ascension. You know, so if you don't ascend from third density to fourth density, and please understand, I'm not talking about dimensions. I'm talking about densities because I'm talking about the law of one. This is the law of one question she asked. Um, are you stuck on earth for seven? She said 77,000 more years. It's 76. Um, but no, you're not stuck on earth because earth is going to fourth density. So no. So after what the Ra would say is after this, if you don't ascend, and go to fourth density, then you go to another third density planet, where then you'll have to experience some of those third density tragedies that we've been going through, the famine, plague, and war. Um, but, and oh, yes, how do you know? Well, because the Ra very specifically says you have to be at least 51% in service to others, as opposed to service to self. It is all about understanding we are all one, we are all connected, and that we need to help each other. And do you do that and think like that and feel like that the majority of the time? Or is everything me, me, me? So that's the best answer I can give you, Gina. I do have a whole lot of one class program. Um, you know, look at the playlist. You can see it. That is for members and um, plus, we do the raw channelings every month. And so, yeah, for those of you interested in the law of one, you know, obviously that's kind of my area of expertise. So, you know, please look into that. Paige asked a question that I know a lot of you have been thinking about, and it's been on a lot of your minds, and that's about the children and the children not being able to go to school and go to all their normal things, you know, like dance class and karate class or Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, YMCA, whatever it is that they were doing, even just having play dates. You know, how is it going to affect them academically, okay, missing school? Because I know where I live, I just drove by a school today and it's in darkness. There's no classes happening. And I can also tell you there's no virtual classes happening either where I'm living. And how is it going to affect their maturity, right? Because, you know, now they don't have that structure. And so let's take a look about, you know, the future of these kids that are going through all of this right now. And I know this affects a lot of you. A lot of you are parents and grandparents and you are worried. So let's take a look at, at the future of these kids. I, my personal feeling, I believe these children are amazingly resilient. I think these kids are tougher than what we are giving them credit for. But at the same time, some of them are going to need some help. You know, there's going to be some mental health issues. There's going to be, I mean, you already know there's obesity issues, right? They're not getting the exercise. So there's going to be some issues. But, you know, I also say these kids are strong. They're resilient. And I have a lot of faith in them. I really do. Okay, let's take a look. Achieving a milestone, you know, and first of all, this is a four, right? And four is a great number to get in tarot because it's so strong. You know, it takes four corners to build the foundation of a house, okay? And these two people are celebrating a milestone. And one of the milestones can be graduation. And so that, I mean, to me, this is such an optimistic card that I feel really good about it. The obstacle, whoo, okay, king of wands. So he's all passion and fire and um, that that makes me wonder if we're not considering all of those other things that go along with children. You know, I mean, yes, education is important and exercise is important. But how about their passions? Are they doing their passions? You know, I mean, to me, growing up, like going to ballet class was everything, was everything. You know, and so many children are the same way. And so are they still experiencing passion? And it's coming up in the obstacle position. Okay, once again, oh, this is interesting. Okay, yeah, so slow and steady. You know, all four hooves of all the knights. This is the one that has all four hooves on the ground. So are things going to change overnight? Nope. To me, this is the slowest moving card in the deck. 
However, it also tells me, just like the last issue that we read on with the healthcare workers, we're going to be throwing money at this. And that's what needs to happen. And then look, the kids go back to having their relationships with other human beings, with other children, with teachers, you know, all, all, all sorts of teachers, not just school teachers. But, you know, like I said, for so many kids, it's music class that keeps them going or dance or karate or gymnastics or, you know, there's so many different things that keeps kids going. And, and it's an ace. Aces are about a new beginning. You know, it's going to be okay in the long run, but in the short term, these are some slow moving cards. You know, they're not literally not one card is fast moving in any of this. Okay. Um, Pamela asked, oh, Pamela asked an interesting question. Um, what do I think about the men in black shadow people, hat man? What's their origin and their purpose? Um, my, th and this is all I can do is give you my personal opinion, you know, growing up like so many other kids, uh, cause first of all, I do think pretty much all children are psychic and intuitive. Um, they do see the hat man, right? That stereotypical hat man, the dark figure that has a hat that just kind of roams around and the shadow people. And I think that's what causes so many people to turn off their third eye, you know, because as children, they see things that are scary and they just turn it off. So my feeling on the hat men and the shadow people is that they're from another dimension, that they're not really part of our reality. They slip through, there's portals, and, you know, that's why it's important that when you do this sort of psychic work, you do it correctly. You don't want to just randomly open portals. You know, this is why I've spoken out so much about not using drugs and alcohol when you do tarot or the Ouija board or the pendulum or the runes or whatever it is, because you're, you're making a gateway. And if you don't know how to close it up and um, take care of it, then you start getting these strange interdimensional beings. Men in Black, my feeling about them has always been that it's our government and they just have superior technology. That is, you know, I always felt like they were human. That was always my belief. And once again, you can challenge me on it because I can't prove any of this. That's just my own personal belief. But growing up, I did see the shadow people and I did have the hat man in my room. Um, however, though, you know, you can get rid of them, you know, just by the typical means that you would with anything else. And, you know, and if you have children that are experiencing that, call in the angels, you know, do that sword banishing with the five angels, you know, look it up, the lesser sword banishing, you'll find it. Um, Christina asked a political question. Will Bloomberg, um, is he going to give massive financial support to the Dems in November? Uh, my, my gut instinct is saying yes. Intuitively, yes. I don't think he's going to back away. I think he's still going to do his thing with that. Let's take a little peek. What do we need to know about Bloomberg? jumpy when I get into his energy. Okay, let's take a look. Interesting. Um, the cards are so mixed. So here's what I'm going to say. Something is going to happen between now and then that we just don't know about. Because the first card is, you know, peace, love, and happiness, right? You know, this is the happy family. And so, yeah, this is him giving the money. However, there's some hard feelings. Here's the obstacle. There's some hard feelings here. And so that could have a real impact. However, he is going to take some action. Some action will be had. You know, this... Now, talking about fast moving cards, right? This is one of the faster moving ones. Look at that horse go. Um, yeah, so action will be had. He will do, you know, give some money. And when I asked for a clarifier about it, you know, here, here's the, the Dems receiving good news about money. So, but the reason why I said it was mixed is because we finish it off with stress, worry, and anxiety. 
And so there's a lot of emotions. I think there's some hurt feelings going around between them. And uh, I kind of get the feeling like we just don't know everything that's going on. So, yeah, you know, and that's so often the case. And it's so frustrating when you make predictions that you can't ever validate because they'll never put it on the evening news, right? So, all right. Um, Deborah asks about the uh, Prince Andrew trial. So as you probably know, he's been stripped of his military titles. And what that apparently means, um, you know, as an American, not really knowing much about these sort of things, is that he's going to have to fight these allegations as a private citizen. Now, I know we're saying private citizen. Do I think he's a private citizen like I'm a private citizen? Probably not. Um, but how do I see that fearing? Not so good, to be honest with you. So let's take a look. Let's take a little peek and let's see. What do we need to know about Prince Andrew? I mean, obviously there is something there because the queen took action. You know, she wouldn't just randomly take action. She's not somebody who does things in haste. You know, she, she doesn't. And I think she's always going to do what she believes is best for the country too. So, or at least what's best for her family. Um, so Prince Andrew. So the basis of this has to do with his relationship with Jeffrey. Okay, we all know who I'm talking about. So the basis of this is very emotional, right? Because it's cups. Um. And I think where it's also an ace, this is a very emotional new beginning for him. Like, uh, he may not have expected this or saw this coming. Maybe he thought, like, his mother wouldn't actually do this. The obstacle, trying to get away with something. And so, you know, here he is trying to cover things up. You know, it's a little hard. I mean, because, you know, we, I think we've all seen the pictures and things like that. So, you know, there's that. Um, secret agendas, hidden motives, you know, the hidden, you know, the, the high priestess is all about hidden things, things that are going on behind the scenes. You know, she's very clever and, but she's very, very quiet. And so she keeps all of this knowledge to herself. And I think that's what's happening. Um, it does appear that it's going to go to court. You know, the King of Swords is someone who is judicial. Um, he can represent the legal system. And that's where we become enlightened. And this is where we start to find out some facts. So, you know, I think it's going to unfold the way it unfolds. Okay, so the next question um, is from Marie. And I thought it was an interesting question because it's one that I've actually never read on. And she asked, now that Emmett Till's case is closed, you know, finally after all these years, um, does the accuser, Carolyn Bryant, feel guilty? You know, because at one point she did say um, he did not deserve it. She did say that at one point. But of course, it was far, far too late after she, I mean, she said it decades later. When I looked into her a little bit, she is believed to still be alive at the age of 88. She's been married three times. Um, let's take a look. You know, I can't even imagine because, you know, he didn't even harm her in any way. You know, how could you ever justify that? You know, just because she was white and she had the power and she could do that. And now she's had to live all these decades knowing that she did this to another human being. And so let's take a look at Carolyn Bryant. Oh, first card. She feels like she's just lost everything. This is the poverty card. The card where, you know, you've lost your, your well-being, your, your money, your health. So she is actually not in good shape. Oh. And the obstacle is the death card. Now, normally I don't, you guys all know I don't do death predictions. 
but obviously this is not a good sign. Um, she is quite aged, but <sighs> followed by the card of grief, sorrow, regret, remorse. And so, yeah, so she eventually did feel guilty, you know, daily dollar short, but she did eventually feel guilty. And then I get the devil card. And so, you know, I, I'm wondering if, you know, first of all, he is a card of sin, right? And what she did was sinful, but it's also a card of feeling chained down. Like this must have weighed heavily on her. Like knowing what she had done, it must have just been like this weight around her neck. And so, you know, I'm going to say, um, yeah, she did feel guilty. Not that that helped Emmett very much, did it? So let's finish up with the Starseed Oracle. I have picked four cards. Here they are. And what I want you to do is to just imagine that you're reaching out to your soul family, your starseed family, and ask them, what do I need to know right now? Take a deep breath, relax. Is it one, two, three, or four? I'll try to fan them out really well. Okay, ready? Card number one is the Pleiades, Pleiadian energy. And it says, visionary, inspired ideas, big picture thinking. So not looking at the minutia of things, coming up with those big ideas of how you want to change the world, because that's why star seeds come down, right? We want to change the world. We want to make the world a better place. We want to break down those old structures and, you know, ways of doing things that no longer work. And so beautiful Palladian energy for all my Palladians, you know, you're my healers and teachers. And, and I think probably at this point in history, most people that have come down are Palladian. Um, number two, Andromedan energy. Jump in, it says. So Andromedan energy, adventure, say yes to change. I keep getting this in my clients' readings, that they're stagnating, that they're getting boring, that they're not taking those leaps of faith. They're not trusting in the universe. I think 2022 is going to be a huge year of change for so many people. Card number three, star family. And it says, you're part of a team of souls, call in support. And I always say this to my clients, whatever it is that you want to do, whether it's to start a YouTube channel, write a book, buy a new house, call in your guides, call in your angels, call in your soul family. We're not down here alone. They're right there waiting for us, but it's a free will planet. You have to invite them in, invite them in and let them help you. And then lastly, messenger, which is serious energy. So for all my Syrians, I don't have a lot of Syrian clients. Serious energy, bringing harmony and balance. And that makes me think of Sirius B, right? The aquatic planet. It's, it's a six density planet with, um, you know, telepathic dolphins and whales and beautiful sea creatures that telepathically can build all these, you know, communities and do everything with their minds, but they can only do it because they work as one. They are in perfect harmony. They're in sync. And so try to bring that energy down into your daily life where you're living this life that's balanced and harmonious because so often we get caught up in the negativity and the chaos and that doesn't help any of us, does it? So, all right, everyone, it was a pleasure making this video and I will see you all tomorrow on Hogarth's channel. Bye, everyone.